Yo, so after a long hiatus, I'm back on YouTube. Oh, I'm doing uh, my thing. Uh, personal reasons why I wasn't on YouTube, I'll disclose to you straight away. I was just too busy. Man, I was distracted, but now I'm back to do a review of Netflix's Sandman. So just to get straight to it, I watched all 11 episodes. Um, pretty sure I snoozed through like one or two, really, but. Uh, so yeah, let's start with episode one. So it's about uh, it's based on Neil Gaiman's original comic book novel, which took place in nineteen eighty nine to something like nineteen ninety something. So just to get straight to the first episode, it's about it's about a god called Dream, but he's in his human form throughout the whole series. And his name's Morpheus. His real name's Morpheus. He's a personification of Dream. And basically this dude gets captured in 1916 by an occult. And what this cult does is that they cap they cap Yo so after a long case I'm back on YouTube. Oh, I'm doing uh, my thing. Uh personal reasons why I wasn't on YouTube. I'll disclose to you straight away, I was just too busy, man, I was distracted, but now I'm back to do a review of Netflix's Sandman. So just to get straight to it, I watched all 11 episodes, um, pretty sure I snoozed through like one or two, really, but, uh, so yeah, let's start with episode one. So it's about, uh, it's based on Neil Gaiman's original comic book novel. Which took place in 1989 to something like 1990 something so just to get straight to the first episode it's about it's about a god called dream but he's in his human form throughout the whole series and his name's morpheus his real name's morpheus he's a personification of dream and basically this dude gets captured in 1916 by an occult and what this cult does is that they cap, they cap, and once they trap him into this sphere like uh, prison, he gets stuck there for 106 years. And during that time, that occult's now made out of a out of a dad, his son, but the son accidentally kills the dad. This all takes place in the first episode. And during that time, one of Dream's nightmares gets uh, loose, and he's played by like. This guy was in Logan, Predator, and he's got like T5, so like really fucked up stuff, um, which is weird. But uh, later on to the series, we do get um, some new characters. Uh, Dream does eventually manage to get out, and he's back in his realm called the Dreaming, which is made up of everyone's dream and everything. Uh, so the characters I was going to get into... Um, the characters I was going to get into was, of course, Dream's Nightmare, which I can't remember his name, but he's the guy with the teeth. He's the main antagonist of the series. He gets loosed on the waking world, which is our dimension, which is our world, because it's not about dreams. And he starts killing people, goes on a killing spree. He starts turning, like, the regular normal people into, like, psychopaths, uh, serial killers, all kinds of fucked up as shit uh, but uh, but when uh, yeah so there's a few characters I'll mention so there's one played by Janelle Coleman from Doctor Who and she's like a priestess and she captures a demon and one of the reasons why her and Dream um, encounter each other is because whilst Dream was away in this prison sphere like thingy uh, a lot a lot of fucked up as shit sort of happens to him in terms of him losing his main equipment which gives him his full powers. Musk is really his helmet. Um he's got his fit he's got his uh, little crystal which is really his ruby. And all of these things sort of gets given away to different human beings whilst he's kept in prison by this occult for like a hundred and six years. Which is since the like twenty early twentieth century, so when Dream gets gets awoke gets out he he gets out by someone accidentally dreaming near him because he's got these superpowers where he can access people's dreams, 
I do sorts of really cool shit. But uh, when he gets out, of course he's pissed. Um, he comes back to the dreaming, which I think is episode one and two. Well, really episode two. And he's got to get a, to a long journey to get his items back, to get his four powers back. But one of his... Uh, or his rubies kept by a human, I think. Which is this old, which is this like blonde lady passes it to her son, and they haven't aged since like whatever long, long time. They've like prolonged their lifespan and shit. But uh, regards to his to his helmet though, it's all the way in hell. So this dude's got to like travel all the way to hell just to get back his helmet from Lucifer, who's played by Grendel and Christie in the series from Game of Thrones. So if you remember, she played the Brienne, Brienne of Tarth, that really tall lady, uh, who was like one of the best warriors in the se- in the Game of Thrones series. But, uh, what else could I like go on about? There's like lots of things from the series. I mean, if you're a comic book fan of the Neil Gaiman graphic novel you'll probably recognize loads of easter eggs something i mean n- nothing i'm too familiar with because i'm so new to this sort of sandman mythology from dc comics originally the whole thing was supposed to be a film and it was supposed to star joseph gordon levitt but they cancelled it because of the screw-ups with the writing and now it's this big netflix show which i had no idea would be so good and it was they made an extra episode um, so on to the later episodes of this series. So Dream, after getting his items back, of course he does run into one human, he has his ruby. Um, actually let me backtrack for a moment. The bit when Dream comes out of the sphere, and he's now in 2022, he goes after the guy who had him in the sphere, the occult. So when I was mentioning the dad and the son, it's the son who's now a really old man. And... You know, he gets killed by Dream and he just passes away and stuff. So so now that Dream's so now that Dream's on his quest to find his items and he then encounters the Ruby, which is held by another human whose mom was a part of the occult but she fled with one of the items behind their back. So now the son's sort of this evil psychopath, um He's played by David Fulis, whatever. Uh, And he's like this crazy middle-aged guy from a psychiatric hospital. Um, He loves killing people. He's got this fuck-twisted way of seeing humanity itself all the time. You know, he turned... He he even ends up in a cafe and turns people into, like, uh, serial killers... Um, they do sorts of like evil. It's it's like the Ruby gave him this sort of mind manipulation thing, and not only that, he ki- he can instantly kill someone who's trying to kill him with a weapon. So then there's one bit where this prison guard dude tries to shoot him, where he breaks out of his cell, and the dude literally doesn't disintegrate, but his whole skeleton just rips apart, and his muscles come apart and all sorts of nasty stuff, but. Uh, later, later on, um, Dream is also in hell, and whilst he does get his helmet, he does do a battle with the devil, he's like this female played by Gwendolyn Christie, and the devil's actually just called Lucifer, and after this battle, Dream does win, but the show does set up Lucifer as the main big bad for season 2, just because he beats her in this little battle, which looks cool. Uh, but regards to the Dream's Nightmare, the main villain, he does get absorbed by Dream, so he's back to his original state as his tiny skull. I mean, I may not explain everything in this video, because there's a lot to take in from the series, don't get me wrong. But, uh, I mean, there's also this look, there's teenager called Vortex who can enter people's dreams and make them collapse but she can destroy a whole universe so there's all sorts of really cool uh, concepts they probably picked up from the comics but 
if you ask me what I think of the show, um, I would definitely recommend it to people who love sort of fantasy things. I mean, really, I didn't expect it to be as good as it was. So I think it could have been a really boring shit show for anyone, but it was it was all right. It was a great thing to catch up this summer. But uh, yeah, I mean, this and Stranger Things on Netflix was pretty good. Um, I think Netflix should definitely. <sighs> Uh, what do I think Netflix should do? I mean, I'm not sure if the show can run on for so many seasons because there's so many different plots. If you see what I mean, it's sort of we we also have had different storylines where where I thought it was just gonna finish in maybe a few episodes, and they made it last all the way to eleven. So, really, as long as there's different plot lines, they can perhaps just keep adding in new stories, new stories over as much as they want. So um but who knows when they're gonna start filming the second season, I don't know. But that's all from me from now. So please comment, like and subscribe and peace.